you stand with me and you can go ahead and turn to Psalms chapter 3 if you want. And we're going to read verse 1 for now. David says, How are they increased that trouble me? Psalms chapter 3, starting verse 1, and stay there because we're going to be there for a little while. How are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Lord Jesus, Pastor, I'm going to ask you to pray over this message, if you will. Lord Jesus, we come before you tonight, Lord. Lord, we know that your word is infallible. Yeah. Lord, and that it changes not. Lord, as Sister Gamble brings forth your word tonight, Lord, I pray, Lord, that it does its perfect work. Lord, that you go before her, Lord. Lord, as she Jesus. preaches your word. Lord, let them that have an ear hear what the Spirit says yes. to the church, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you open their hearts. Lord, open their eyes. Open their ears to hear. Lord, as she brings forth your word. Lord, and anoint her and speak to her as she delivers as a servant, Lord, unto you. I ask these things in the holy and righteous name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And the church say amen. 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 The psalm that we're getting ready to read here. Y'all may be seated, I'm sorry. Is the psalm of David. When he fled from Absalom, his son. And I'm sorry if I get, well, you know I always get emotional, but I might get even a little more emotional tonight because this story, touching. it seems personal to me somehow today as I was reading it, studying it. It just seemed like I could feel yes. David's heart. Church, tonight this word is real and it's true. Yes, yes. There's been some men and women of God that we can read about that have been through some tough, tough times. Don't ever think you're the only one. All right. Because believe me, there's others. Yes. Usually someone worse than us Amen. we can find. Amen. Amen. This was a tough time for David. Because you see, Absalom... His son. I don't know how many of you here tonight have children, but our children are special. Yes. They're a part of us. Yes. They're our heart. Some of you are at that place tonight where you know exactly what I'm talking about, and you're going to be able to relate with David in this message tonight. I'm going to tell you that David loved Absalom with all of his heart. Yes, he, did. he loved him with everything he had. Yes. Now we know that David lost a child yeah. with Bathsheba. That's right. And that hurt David. Yes, it it really, really hurt him. Yes. And he wept and cried and fasted before God. But the Lord took the child. Yes, so after God made his decision, David got up and moved on yeah. like he needed to do. Right. But yeah. God told him, said, it's time for you to quit weeping. I've got things for you to do. You, you've got important things to do. You've got to get up, David. You've got to go back go. to what you need to do. <laughs> Take care of the kingdom. But this was another time, another son. Yeah. And David's heart was broken because Absalom had decided that he was going to steal the kingdom from his father. Yeah. And he did it in a very subtle, subtle way. He would stand at the gate, and when people would come in, he would, I'm going to put it this way, he would steal their heart. 
He would reach out with them and make them feel love and compassion. And it turned out that people were turning to Absalom. That he was able to turn their hearts away from David to him. I'll tell you tonight, church, the devil wants to turn your heart away from God to him. And he's not going to give up. He's not going to quit. He's not going to leave you alone, Brother Thomas. But he's going to be there always to try to turn your heart away from God. And this is what was happening with Absalom. He, he, the people of the, time, of the city, he was turning their heart away from the king, away from his own daddy. I'll tell you, that's what makes it so bad, his own daddy. But the devil don't care who he uses, right. and he don't care who he abuses, right. and he don't care who he destroys, right. and he don't care who he kills, because that's his business. But David, in his grief, he says, How are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. And it was many. It was to the point where David was told you need to leave. You're in danger. You need to take your family and those who are still faithful to you and you need to flee. And this is what's so heart-wrenching is that he had to flee from his own son because of his own son. He had to flee. He was in danger. He had to leave his home. He had to leave his city. He had to leave it all behind and flee for his life. But you see, this is not the first time that David ever had to flee for his life. There was other times the devil tried to kill him. Oh my, through the life of David, the devil was after him. Remember when he had to run from Saul? Saul wanted to kill him. He hated him. I'm going to tell you what hated David. It was that evil spirit that was in Saul. He hated David with a passion. And the only way that spirit in Saul's heart. Only way Saul could find any rest was when David would play on his harp. I want you to know tonight, church, music anointed by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. If you'll just let God refresh you, if you'll let him minister to you, it can be a soothing to your soul. But Saul hated him. The devil in him hated David. And he ran after him to kill him. David found himself hiding out in the rocks, hiding out to try to so that his life could be spared. And there was one time old Saul was sleeping, and David come upon him, and he reached down and he cut some of his skirt tail off because he wanted to be able to prove if I wanted to, I could have killed you. But you know what he said? He said, no, this man has been anointed of God. Yeah. And he said, I'll not touch him. I'll not touch him. I'll tell you, church, I thank God for a heart like David. Oh, my, when I pray, I say, God, give me a heart like David that I can love your people like David did. Even Saul and all his evilness, David had a love and respect for him because he would, had been chosen of God at one time. Yeah. David knew he couldn't take the, the kingdom from Saul, that it had to be God. But God had a plan, and he told Saul, he said, I did choose you, but I'm going to take it from you, and I'm going to give it to another because Saul's heart had turned from God. Right. I'll tell you, the devil will turn our heart from God if we're not careful, church. If we're not prayerful. If we're not watching. Please don't ever think it can't happen to you because you are not above or below anybody else. But David said in verse 2, Many there be which say of my soul there is no help for him in God. Many say to David and about David. I'm sure many said about David, his God has rejected him. His God has left him. His God has forsaken him. Why wouldn't they think so? Here of the king is running for his own life and above and, and with that comes the, the hurt and the, the terribleness that he's running because of his own son. Why wouldn't people say God had forsaken 
in him. Come on. I'm going to tell you tonight, church, just because trouble comes to your pastor, just because trouble comes to Brother Mike, just because troubles come to Brother David, don't you think for a moment that God has forsaken them. But God is not forsaken and will not forsake his people that are faithful to him. Then his will be done. I'm going right. to put that in my words. But that's exactly what David meant. Right. Whatever God sees fit for me and yeah. me, he yeah. believed in his heart that he would come back to that to his city, right. that God would restore him. I don't know where you're at in your life tonight, but I want to encourage you, church. God wants to in, He wants to restore you tonight. Yeah. I don't know what I did 
but yet in the midst of it. And I love this because I know in the midst of the storm you can find your place of rest. Man. God will never give you a storm that you won't have a place of rest in it. Yeah. He'll never do that because you see that would be more than you could bear. Listen to what David said. He said, I laid me down and I slept. Yeah. Hallelujah, and I love that because in the midst of this terrible thing that he was living through, God yeah. caused him to be able to lay down and rest. Yeah. Some of you tonight, you're tired and you're weary, but God says, come on, I want to give you rest. Yeah. I've got peace that you know not of. Yeah. I've got a rest like you've never known before if you'll reach out and trust me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Come on, if David could lay down and sleep and rest, cannot we today who are filled with the Holy Ghost? Yeah, come on. Yeah. In the midst of my storm, I thank God I still have joy. Amen. Yeah. Yes, I still have joy. Yeah. And you, I'm telling you, when one storm comes and you make it through it by the sweat of your yeah. brow, and you're like, thank God I made it through that one, watch out. There's another one coming. He'll stand up to those ways and he'll say, Peace, be still. Hallelujah. When they're coming in the boat and you think you're going to sleep, what's the boat coming up? Oh, my God is a big God. And he'll stand and say, Peace. Who is this man that even the winds and the waves, oh, they could. able to stand and speak to that sea, them billows of water. He was able to speak and they had to obey him. I'll tell you tonight when Peter began to sink because he looked around and he saw the waves and he got scared. Oh yeah, we get scared. I'd be lying to you if I told you I didn't get scared sometimes. But I'm telling you still, even then, Jesus can reach down and he'll pull me up me drown. I know that he'll lift me back up because he's a lifter of my head. <laughs> oh, he's awesome. He's awesome. He's an awesome God. He's great. He's gracious. Gracious. And he's merciful. I remember one time uh, I went through a terrible, terrible depression. Our house had burned, and I found myself, even though our family had a place to go and we were still all together and things were good for us, I still found myself slipping into a depression. You know that can happen to you before you even realize that you're there. And I knew I was in that place, and I knew I was slipping further. I was a pastor's wife, still pastoring my husband and I, going to church every time, you know, we were supposed to, doing everything still yet we were supposed to do. Never did quit, never did quit praying, never did seek, quit seeking God, never blamed God. But still I found myself slipping in this depression, and I'll be honest with you, church, I didn't know what to do about it. I knew I had to keep praying. I knew because my daddy taught me there's not ever a time you quit going to church, but you be there when you're supposed to. You be at your post. I knew what to do there, so I just kept doing it. Amen. And I kept praying and asking God. But I didn't know what else to do to get myself out. You know why? Because I couldn't get myself out. All right. All right. And it amazes me what God will do. And when God does it, it only takes a moment. One lady, I had 
had many prayers, had had many to pray for me and to, to come around me and love me. One lady called me and said, Sister Donna, God give me a vision of you in water. And the water was just about over your head. Now, I had never talked to this lady about this. She said the water was just, was just about over to your head. But God told me to call you today and tell you that he'll not let you drown. Amen. He'll not Amen. let you go under. And I'm telling you, church, it happened just that quick. God began to lift me up out of that. I can't tell you how it happened. I don't understand it. All I know is it did that God was true to his word. themselves against me. Don't you just get tired of being afraid of the devil? Don't you get sick and tired of being afraid of what he's going to use somebody to do against you? David said, I'll not be afraid until what he meant was it don't matter how many there are that come against me and try to destroy me, I'll not be afraid. Yeah, there's only one way you could not be afraid. You're going to have to completely trust God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But he said, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth yeah. of the ungodly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Surely they've got good news for me. They're running toward me. Surely they got good news. But it wasn't good news. He said, is my son, is my son Absalom alive? And 
in his heart as they told him of the death of his son. His heart was broke, broke, broke to the point where he couldn't hardly lift himself up. And they had to come to him and tell him, David, this has been a great day of victory for your people. And they need you to be their king. You got to rise up. You got to get up, David. See, even though our troubles bow us down to where we feel like we're going to die and not be able to lift our head again, we still got to lift our head up. We still got to keep going. Be at our post. So, David, you got to get back at your post. Your peoples want a great victory for you today. But if you don't get up, if you don't get back at your post, David, it's all going to be for nothing. And these people are going to turn against you. You've got to get back at your post. Oh, my son Absalom, my son Absalom is what now David could say. But he listened to the good counsel of the man of God. And he got up. Yeah. And he did his job. Yeah. And he became king once again. God raised him up and put him back. God restored him. I'm telling you, church, tonight, God wants to restore you and lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. seeking the Lord. Uh, Brother Gardner was praying. And you know, it was like our prayers was one. I really felt that, Brother Gardner, when you was praying. Uh, and for the whole church. But as he was praying, I just felt that, and all of us, that we were so unified in that prayer. And he began to pray for the windows of heaven to open. I said, okay, Lord, that's my song I'm supposed to do tonight. <laughs> and he began to pray, Lord, keep me on the potter's wheel. Put me on the potter's wheel. And I'm like, okay, God, that's one of my scriptures. <laughs> God was speaking to me through that prayer. So I want to read it to you tonight in Romans 9.21. Now listen. Hath not the potter power over the clay? Come on. So no matter what storm we're in, he has the power yeah. over the clay. Yeah. Now, of the same lump to make 
make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. Now James 4 and 10 says this, humble yourself in the sight of God yeah. and he will lift you up. Yeah. Yeah. So what's my job? My job is to keep myself on the potter's wheel. Yeah. And how do I do that? I do that by seeking him. Yes, pastor, I do that by fasting. I do that by prayer. I do that by reading and studying my word and getting it in my heart. That's me being on the potter's wheel. Now, I thought about this as I was praying. And it blessed me. I said, God, because you know the potter puts his hand down in that vessel. Yes, he does. And the potter is so careful. He's so careful as he shapes that vessel to be what he wants it to be. I said, God, thank you for your hand of mercy. Hallelujah. Oh, and I thought, God, thank you for your hand. Compassion. Yes, Lord. That when I'm a vessel that's not where what she needs to be, your compassion reaches through that hand and is still shaping me for your kingdom. God, thank you for that hand of compassion. Lord, thank you for that hand of healing that can reach down in me and heal. Then think about this. The scripture says that when the vessel is marred, yeah. he takes that hand and he brings it back down yeah. to the very beginning. Yes. But he don't leave it there. You know what he does? He gets that wheel going and he takes that hand again. That hand of mercy, that hand of kindness, that hand of forgiveness. It's a hand that you and I can't really comprehend. All right. All right. And he starts putting that inside of us and molding us and making us anew, the scripture says. Making us anew. Hallelujah. Some vessels are to honor and some are to dishonor. But I said, God, I want to be a vessel of honor for you. Oh, For you, Lord. Yes. Brother David you might know that song. I don't know. I know. Yeah. I'm almost done, I think, church. But there's one more scripture I really feel led to stress a little bit on, and that's Luke 12, 42. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? And Galatians 6 and 9 says, and I believe it goes with it, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We're going to reap the goodness of God if we don't faint, if we are faithful. That's what it means if we're faithful. You can't pray today and not pray tomorrow. There is a saying that says one prayer with no prayer for one week. Uh, no prayer for seven days makes one week. All right, there I got it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No prayer for seven days makes one week. Come on, we gotta be faithful in our prayer. We can't just do it during revival. We gotta be faithful to our prayer. Let's not let this community die and go to hell. But let's be faithful to reach out to God for them every day. Be faithful to your church. Be faithful to your pastor. He has needs just like we do. Just like 
And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great yeah. glory. I want to encourage you, church, tonight. And when these things begin to come to pass, Oh, I love this. Look up. Look up. Look up. Look up. Come on, church. Let's look up. God is the, God is the lifter of our head. Let's look up. He says, look up as your redemption. Draw nigh. Oh, all of these things coming our way. All these things coming to the church. All of these things. killing babies by the thousands a day or I don't know how many a day but lots of them when they're killing babies every day when they're when I'm not going to start naming things but you know what's happening in our country today I don't need to name them all you know they're an abomination to God when all of these things are coming and we know with all But the scripture says for us to do what, church? To look up! Because our redemption, our restoration, Jesus is going to come and take us where we belong. We don't belong here. We're aliens. We don't belong here. This is not our home. Amen. I want you to know tonight, church, I thank God for our precious jewels that he sent yeah. during this revival. I remember one time our church was mostly made up of elderly people. We had no young people. And I was at work one day and I said, God, why is this? He said, well, Donna, those are your jewels. And I just began to weep right there in front of everybody at that machine. Tears was just rolling down my eyes. I thank God for the jewels that he has put in this revival. Every one of you are jewels. Now, I'm not saying y'all are old. But I want you to know you're a jewel. You're a jewel to God and you're a jewel to this pastor and you're a jewel to us. And we love you and we appreciate you. But tonight, if you'll stand with me, 